Have you or your kids ever said about school, when am I going to ever use this in real life? Hi, happy Tuesday. This is Darren Roberts, Master Trainer at Impact Training Corporation and the Abundance Accelerant. Welcome to the Tuesday Tickle and Tick, show number 53. Today, what does school teach us for success? That happens quite often. I've probably said it myself. I know my kids have. When am I going to use this in real life as they learn some things from school? Well, I've got five things from my son's school that is happening right now that we can all learn from for business and our personal development. So as you may know, my son is a passionate cricketer in the summer months and the cricket season is coming to an end. And through his school, he's blessed to be part of a development squad and it's the Greg Chappell Cricket Academy. The Chappell Brothers, so if you're a cricket, cricket follower, you would know the Chappell Brothers are ex-Australian cricketers, Greg, is an Australian captain and they happened to go to my son's school when they were young. So to give back to the school, Greg and the school have put together a Greg Chapel Cricket Academy. What's the big deal? What can we learn from that to help us in business and our personal development? Well, the first of five is that my son gets to be coached by some very successful coaches, Greg, but also those coaches around him that he's trained with the philosophy of coaching. So he gets to, my son gets to hang out and be taught by those who have been there and done it at the highest level. And we know if you've read any personal development or listened to any world leaders, they say that you become the average of the five people you associate with most. So if you want to assess the quality of your business, who are the five people you associate with most? And you're probably the average in business of of their five businesses. Relationships, personal health, fitness, finance. The theory is that the five people you associate with most is where you're going to average out. So part of this program is to elevate the boys in the program to associate at a higher level which means they're going to learn things and they're going to be driven to perform at a higher level themselves. So my question to you is who are you associating with? I'd love for you to work that out. Who are the five people you associate with most in business? And is that the people, is that the success that you want to have? Who are the five people you associate with most around lifestyle, relationships, wellness, health and fitness? Is that the relationships, wellness, health and fitness lifestyle that you want? If it is, great. If it's not, I'm not saying kick them to the curb, but how do you get higher associations? Who do you need to go and hang out with, meet to do that? I know when I was cycling and running and triathlon, I'd always be training with people that are better than me because it pushes me. If you're the smartest person in the room, You're in the wrong room. So that's the first thing. The second thing is as part of the program, they do strength and conditioning training on a regular basis to get a baseline. And then they do retests of their strength and conditioning to make sure that they're improving, to make sure that the program is on track. So again, how do we relate that to business and personal development? What are your KPIs? What are your key performance indicators? Do you have key performance indicators, not just the outcome of target or budget or income, but about what needs to get you there? Conversion rates, activity rates. That's from a business perspective. If it's from a non-business perspective, is it a finance budget? Is it putting an X percentage of your income away into a safety net account? If it's a fitness goal, if it's a personal development goal, how, how often are you reading? Is it 20 minutes a night? Is that your KPI? What KPIs do you have around the things that are most important in your life? The third thing is an interesting one. Are you practicing in the real environment? Greg Chappell says that the cricket nets is the worst place to develop cricket skills. He says you've got to be out there in the middle of the over where you play the game. So what are we doing from a sales best practice, a business best practice? Are we listening to lots of audios? Are we reading lots of books? 
Are we doing lots of training? But most importantly, are we implementing that in the real world? Are you putting that in and practicing in your real business scenarios, in your real sales best practices? If you've been improving your communication, are you trying to communicate like that when you meet people face to face? If you're I've done disc behavioral, done my disc behavioral training. Are you putting that into practice in real life or are you just going, I know about disc, I know what behavioral style I am. That doesn't have an effect. You've got to put it out there in the real world. And then that practice, remember, we as humans need to see, hear, or do something at least six times to retain just 62% of the information. So reading a book or listening to an audio once is not going to get you to implement. It's got to be a repeated message. And the great message is it's better to read one book 300 times and implement rather than reading 300 books. I regularly hear people say, oh, I read so many books this year. The question is, what did you implement? Part four. Greg Chappell was part of the program has Graham Winter who wrote the book Mindful Cricket and has the business Mindful Cricket. He was the psychologist to the Australian Olympic team and the um, the Australian cricket team. So he's one of the highest people about psychology and mindfulness. And he came and spoke to us as parents and the boys in the squad. And they're going to do some regular work with their psychology and the mindfulness of cricket and creating habits. What habits they have in batting, what habits they have with peak performance. So again, for us, what are your habits? What are my habits to peak performance? Do you have a morning routine? Do you have some time, which is your time, some quiet time, rather than be mad, panicked and rushing around to perform at your peak? What are your routines? What are your habits? If you don't, do you need to form some? And the last one is culture. This development program is very much about how do you represent as a cricketer in this school and in this culture? Not just what do you need to do, but who do you need to be to be part of the team and to represent? Again, the question goes back to us in our businesses and in our lifestyle. Do your staff know what it takes to be on your team? Not just what they need to do, but what it takes to be part of the team to grow a culture. Come back to personal development. Do your family know what it means to be part of your family? What is the the culture that you want to create? Not just what to do within the family, but how to be part of that family. So I'd love you to think about your own experiences through school or other areas. What can you bring out of that to bring into your life to be peak performer in whatever is important to you, whether it be in business or relationships or lifestyle or whatever is important to you. Sometimes we have these opportunities in front of us to learn from and they just slip by. So today's message is, well, here's some examples of things that I was able to pick up on that we can all learn from. So I'd love to get your thoughts on that. What came out from your schooling or other education that you and other people can learn through life and business? Put in the comments below. We'll look forward to seeing you next time for the Tuesday Tickle and Tip. Bye for now.